or wrong? Here with reaction, Fox News contributors Lisa Booth and Charlie Hurt, also former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee is with us. Guys, good to see you all. Uh, Lisa, let me start with you. Uh, th that's a lot to absorb. I mean, we are we're on the verge of South Carolina. It's the home state for Governor Haley. Uh, she seems to be getting more aggressive by the day. Um, it's it's gotten heated, but South Carolina, frankly, is always heated. You can go back to George W. Bush and, and John McCain. That was a, a pretty nasty race back in the day. What are your thoughts? Well, and you asked that question, where is the path? There is none. And she knows that. I mean, what does it say about Nikki Haley, about the weakness of her candidacy, that she had to lie to us to get anyone to watch that press conference today? She had, she had to punk us. She had to dupe us. She had to lead people to believe that she was dropping out to get people to watch her press conference. There is no path for Nikki Haley, I think. And, I, and, I, and she knows that. I, I think she knows that she's not going to win. She knows there's not going to be a path. I think what she wants is pats on the head from the mainstream media. Maybe she wants a contract at MSNBC, CNN. She wants to be part of the club. But I do want to mention just one thing about watching the Trump uh, town hall tonight. It, it made me think that we don't have to live like this, Sean. We can have a strong economy. We can have a strong border. We can be respected again as a nation. But we need a change at that White House, and that change is Donald Trump. So I hope Americans were watching and know that we don't have to live like this. It can be different. It has been and it will be again, hopefully. It, you know, Governor, I'm, I'm particularly, I don't know, maybe amused is the word, but I find it even bewildering for the, the mainstream media mob. I, I've always viewed them as sort of an extension of all things liberal Democrat, and they go with all the talking points. They were called in, and some guy named Ian Sams in the special counsel's office is directing them what they should be reporting on. They're upset that the, the mainstream media can no longer ignore what they tried to ignore for almost four years, and that's Joe's physical and cognitive decline. Uh, but they're upset in the White House that the obvious is being spoken. I don't think they have any choice at this point. Sean, it took a beach towel for me to dry my tears when I realized how sad they are at the White House over the way the press is treating them. I mean, my gosh, uh, you've turned into a New York refugee, having to leave your home state because of the wonderful reception you've been given up there. But I, I just think it's absurd <laughs> uh, that the White House is whining that somehow they just don't think they're being treated very well. Well, welcome to our world. And boy, are they ever uh, having a hard time adjusting to just a tiny little bit of criticism. Look what Donald Trump has been through for the past eight years. It's been absolutely the most relentless attack on him personally, legally, economically, socially, in every way. And he's still standing up and fighting. That's why I think a lot of Americans are coming to Donald Trump and saying nobody else can take what he's put up with and keep getting up every morning and fighting for us. Well, let's get your take, Charlie. And, and I guess the horse race is in the news. We're heading into South Carolina. Um, I understand the defiance. Nikki Haley came out. You know, she's been getting more aggressive against President Trump, who is always aggressive himself. He doesn't apologize for it. Is that going to work in the final days leading up to this primary on Saturday? Oh, I don't think I don't think it is at all. And I think that, uh, you know, she's had, had kind of a, a lot of problems, I would say, with her campaign all along, starting with the fact that she has kind of run this, uh, you know, I am woman, hear me roar campaign and, and does a lot of sort of identity politics, almost like she's borrowing a lot of techniques from Democrats, which is a weird way to run in the Republican Party. Um, but, you know, you know, once we, I, I do, and I think Lisa is exactly right, uh, you know, the idea that she has to uh, punk people and trick people into covering one of her campaigns is just sort of further, pr one of her uh, events is further proof that uh, it really is over. Um, we'll, you know, she'll, it, it appears that she's going to get beaten in South Carolina. Hopefully she figures out how to get out and get out honorably and then, and then we can sort of focus on the general election. But if this election... Uh, is about the issues and not about all of the noise that the media tries to bring into it and not about, you know, all the things that people want to make up and say about Donald Trump or whether he should be in jail and all this stuff. If it's about the actual issues that people care about, like the economy and like the border and like crime, Donald Trump should win this 
by, with 80 percent of the vote. Because 80 percent of Americans across the, uh, the political spectrum and across economic, race, gender, everything, 80 percent of Americans want the America that Donald Trump is talking about and has demonstrated he can, he can bring. Nobody wants this world that Joe Biden has given us. Yeah. You know, you know Governor Huckabee, it's, it's funny that Donald Trump at one point actually said, I'm probably one more indictment away from being guaranteed that I'll get reelected. Um, and I, I mean, only he would come up with that line. You got to admit this. There's, there's some truth, though, behind it. And that is, I mean, I've always said that he seems to defy conventional political gravity. And that is, he gets indicted, his poll numbers get up. Uh, go up. He he gets arraigned. His poll numbers get up. Go up. He he gets a mugshot. He's selling more T-shirts online than than anybody could ever wish for. Uh, how do well, how do you describe this phenomenon? Have they so overreached, and have they weaponized the justice system so much that the the, the impossible has happened? A guy as strong as Donald Trump is he is he now become a victim? Well, he's, he's become a martyr in some ways, but I think what's happening, people in America aren't as dumb as the Democrats think them to be. And that's as simple as I can put it. They're just not that stupid. They see through this. They see the political persecutions. They see Joe with open boxes of records in his garage, records he wasn't even supposed to have. And he gets, uh, you know, a little, gee, we're not going to prosecute because you're old and you don't know what the heck's going on. Donald Trump gets a raid on his home early in the morning, and they go through his wife's closet. People look at that, and they say, yeah, this ain't right. So honestly, Sean, what's happening is that the more they try to tear him down, the stronger he gets. Nikki Haley, when she says chaos fottles Donald Trump, she makes it like a negative. Actually, what she really should admit is the reason chaos follows Donald Trump is because it's the chaos of the opposition. It's the FBI, the CIA, the IRS, the DOJ using all of the powers of government to create chaos for him. It's just that he's the one guy that just might have the capacity to not only stand up to it, but to organize it and put it down once and for all and give this country back to the people who should own it. You know, let me ask you, Lisa, about no, no, Navalny, um, and this was the opposition leader that was in prison in Russia that seems to have been murdered by that thug and murderer and dictator by the name of uh, Vladimir Putin. Uh, nothing surprises me. And a lot of people have tried to make the case that if Republicans want the border secure first, that would be an America first policy, if they want our budget in balance first, before we consider more aid to Ukraine, it's not like, we're like we haven't given a lot of aid to Ukraine. Granted, everything you want to say about, about Putin being evil, I completely agree with. He's evil, he's a murdering dictator thug, and he invaded a sovereign country, and he's killed innocent men, women, and children. And you know what? The whole world should unite against him. Frankly, the continent of Europe should have stepped up a lot more than, than we have. $75 billion of taxpayer money is a lot. Um, I think the American people, if we did secure the border, if they did get the, the budget in balance, and probably they should make it a loan, not a, a gift, then they might be able to open the door to that. But Democrats say, oh, if you insist on securing the border first uh, and you're, you're not willing to allow in 5,000 people a day, that means you must be a Putin apologist. No apologist. I certainly am not one. I see him for what he is, who he is. He's evil. Well, and there's also, you know, a, a sense of irony as Donald Trump's being persecuted by uh, his enemies and by the president and, and Democrats here in the United States. Look, I'm of the mindset, which this might be unpopular. I don't think Ukraine can win this thing. We don't know what we're spending our money on. There's no accountability with it. There's no transparency. Ukraine has a history of corruption. So does Joe Biden and his family that has profited off of Ukraine as well. So I, I would like to see some sort of deal come together, if possible, um, as opposed to just throwing money at, at this, uh, you know, throwing money at the, the problem. But, uh, you know, look, I, I just want to make one point about what Governor Huckabee said. Um, I, I think the DOJ report has taken away Joe Biden's Trump card. His whole premise, his whole argument this election cycle was the other guy is worse. 
and Americans know what, they, it, that's not true because we saw what things looked like under Trump. We've seen what it looks like under Joe Biden. And, and now we know that Joe Biden is a crook. He mishandled classified information since the 1970s, and he was a senator, a vice president, nowhere near the authority you have as a president uh, who has the ultimate authority on handling classified information, declassifying, classifying. So I, I think the muddies have become, uh, or the waters have become muddied, and uh, Joe Biden no longer has really any argument to make heading into 2024. You know, Charlie, I don't think the Republicans, as slim as their majority is in the House, they're not supposed to be po uh, potted plants, right? And I think for them to insist on secure borders and getting our budget in balance with $34 trillion in debt and saying, no, no more giveaways, maybe loans, maybe help in another way, um, that seems to be the right political formula. If you look at all these previous primaries, you look at these polls, they all show the same thing. The American people are tired of nearly 10 million illegal, unvetted Joe Biden immigrants that are crossing our border. There's been no vetting. We haven't checked their background. And look at the countries they're coming from. I've mentioned it many times. China, Russia, Afghanistan, Egypt, Syria, Iran, not vetted. And then, you know, we'll get into more detail later in the program, but, you know, I think t that's an 80-20, maybe 85-15, exactly. maybe 90-10 issue yeah. in terms of what the American people want. I want them to fight for that. And then we could have all those other conversations and have exactly. them quickly. Um, yeah, and your, your you know, the, biggest the biggest mistake Republicans on Capitol Hill made is they didn't agree to die on the Hill of protecting our border and closing the border. They should have uh, d decided, both chambers, Republicans in both chambers decided that we will shut down the entire government if that's what it takes to force this administration to enforce our laws and stop and seal the border and stop the border invasion. And they failed to do that. And uh, what they wound up doing actually was proving that even more important than a Republican majority in the House or the Senate is having Donald Trump as president in the White House, because apparently the only way we're going to secure the border is to have the, at the top of our executive branch branch, President Trump, who is willing to do whatever it takes to se secure the border. And, you know, uh, Governor Huckabee was just talking about the whole issue of chaos that, that uh, Nikki Haley is talking about, and he's exactly right about this. This The, the idea that you're going to criticize Donald Trump for being this sort of uh, nexus of chaos or whatever, when it really is his opponents who are, are bringing the chaos. But Donald Trump was elected to be a disruptor in Washington. The chaos comes with that. People, you know, obviously everybody would like life to be a bed of roses. They would like politics to all be nice and sweet and everything. That's not where we are. And the reason Donald Trump got elected in 2016 and the reason I think he's going to get reelected again in 2024 is because people want disruption in Washington. They don't want this to keep going the way it's going. And, as, you know, I, you know, I think Republicans do are, are the are the, the less bad party uh, on Capitol Hill. Yeah. But even they don't get it done. Only Donald Trump in the White House gets these things done. All right. Exit question for all three of you. Uh -oh. uh, unless and until Governor tricky. Ambassador <laughs> Haley. Uh, uh, I didn't hear what you said, Lisa, but unless and until uh, Governor Haley gets a win or single digits even, uh, should Donald Trump strategically, Governor Huckabee, you're a smart politician, should he engage or should he ignore? Your advice. Totally ignore her, focus on Biden, but more importantly, focus on what he can do for the American people, what he did do for them. Ignore the opposition from within. It's uh, it's frankly immaterial. Lisa, engage or yeah, ignore? Yeah, ignore. She ignore. She has to lie to us, hoodwink us into watching a press conference. There is no path to her for her in the primary. There's not even a path at a convention. So Donald Trump is the guy. Ignore Nikki Haley. Have your sights set on Joe Biden and the Democrat Party at large. Yeah. Everybody, Charlie, even the, the press, last word. same question. E even the press has moved on. Uh, Donald Trump should move on and put uh, direct all firepower on uh, Democrats and Joe Biden. All right, I appreciate you all, Lisa. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Governor. Always good to have you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.